And if you're reading this, you may think you drink a little too much, yet you wouldn't describe yourself as an alcoholic. Maybe you're a parent who comes home after a stressful day at work and takes a drink to decompress and deal with the kids, another with dinner and then another to top off the evening before dozing off. Or maybe you're a college student who studies hard all week and then downs a six-pack at the first post-exam opportunity. You might celebrate special occasions like a big birthday or even weekend dinners, with a couple bottles of wine. Whether drinking is a celebratory ritual or serves to ease stress, you may be drinking an amount at which health risks outweigh potential benefits. Alcohol use and its associated problems exist on a spectrum, said Dr. John Mariani, Associate Professor of Clinical Psychiatry at Columbia University Medical Center and Director of Columbia University's Substance Treatment and Research Service. There are people who don't meet the criteria even for mild alcohol use disorder and disorder characterized by a loss of control over drinking but are drinking more than what would be considered healthy. Including some alcohol in your diet may lower your risk of a heart attack and type 2 diabetes. But even at low levels, alcohol may interfere with sleep, cloud judgment, contribute to weight gain and negatively interact with some medications. According to the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, people who drink heavily, for men, that's defined as more than four drinks on any day or more than 14 drinks per week, and for women more than three drinks on any day or more than seven drinks per week, have a greater risk of injuries, having children with birth defects and health problems including liver disease, heart disease, depression stroke and several types of cancer. Drinking too much can also make it difficult to manage existing health conditions such as diabetes and high blood pressure. Even in cases where one's alcohol intake doesn't necessarily meet the definition of what we colloquially refer to as an alcoholic i.e. someone who is considered addicted, excessive consumption can increase health risks. Mariani said. Mariani stresses that rather than thinking about being an alcoholic or not, which he says is an imprecise term. It's more important to consider how alcohol may be impacting your life. Red flags include situations in which you don't remember where you parked the car after drinking, embarrassing yourself at a party, or waking up unable to remember where you were. Other behaviors include sending inappropriate emails when drinking, having sex with people you wouldn't otherwise choose, using other substances in conjunction with alcohol, or getting a DWI. These behaviors are objectionable to your value system, and you don't like them, he said. But even if you don't engage in inappropriate behavior, you still might be drinking an unhealthy amount. One might use alcohol almost medically, for anxiety, as an anesthetic, Mariani explained. Here, the consequence is that you are missing beneficial opportunities to help manage the stress, such as going to the gym, reading a book, or building a hobby. The consequences are not bad things per se but an absence of good things that are not happening, because drinking is taking up that time. No one is going to lose their job if they have three drinks in a night, but it takes up time and space that doesn't allow other things to happen. For some, learning about a test result during a doctor's visit or that you've gained an unhealthy amount of weight can be reason enough to cut back. A person may go to the doctor one time and have elevated liver function tests, which is enough of a motivation, Mariani said. Whatever the motivation may be, there are ways to cut back on your alcohol consumption. Below are some tips worth trying, according to experts. One, journal your drinks. Doing so can be a powerful tool in understanding how much you're drinking and can bring awareness of patterns, according to Ginger Halton, a registered dietitian and spokeswoman for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. A lot of my clients will say, well, I don't drink that much, but then when they track their intake on my fitness pal or another app, they start to see patterns like drinking many more days per week than they thought or having more drinks on a given night than they expected, she said. The simple act of recording what you drink may help you naturally drink less. It changes the behavior somewhat. Maybe you'll have three drinks instead of five if you know you have to write it down. Mariani said. It's also important to know whether you are accurately estimating the amount of alcohol you consume. A person may record three drinks, but is it three standard drinks, each containing 1.5 ounces of alcohol, or is it bigger? Knowing what counts as one standard drink can help you accurately determine you.